praise the Lord. I pray that everybody had an awesome Thanksgiving and have a blessed Hanukkah, the ones that celebrate Hanukkah. I was just sitting here listening to a special on Billy Graham and stuff and how he he dedicated his whole life preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world without hesitation with all power and authority he preached the gospel and I was thinking back <clears throat> On this Thanksgiving Day, my son and his wife and my grandchildren come over. I had friends that was here. You know, we are so blessed here in America. We really are. And yes, I know things seem to be going bad, from worse to bad, and you know, and yes, I can truly say I don't care anything about our president. That's true. Um, but really, really, are we in a place where? If you believe in Jesus Christ, if you believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he died on a cross, there are people in this world right now, overseas, that are dying simply because they believe. And they worship him. Did you have to worry about that today? Did you have to worry about policemen or soldiers coming to your door, knocking on your door and dragging you out because you had prayer over your meal in the name of Jesus Christ? I did. We prayed over our meal, thanking the Lord for his glorious gift that he gave us, you know, the family being here, and the friends, and, and the good food, and, you know, I didn't have to go hungry, didn't have to starve. Hmm. It just makes me think. It just makes me think, think, you know. I, we are still blessed. With all of this stuff going on here in the United States, and even with the troubles that are truly coming, but yet we are blessed. He takes care of his people. He really does. And to, for me to know that Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, is my Lord, my Messiah, my Comforter, meeting all my needs is also a blessing. You know, things happen to us in our life. Just because we get saved and we let him into our life and we let him begin to take over and clean this unholiness out of us, things happen. Loved ones die. Loved ones turn on us. Some of our worst betrayal is from our own family, the ones that we love the most.
And it seems to me that our government is turning on us. I, I mean, you know, things happen, people. Really happen. The good and the bad happen to us in our life as we walk for Yeshua HaMashiach. As we walk the road of Calvary, as we walk and going to that cross that he died upon, that symbol of that cross and the blood and, and the pain and the agony that he shed and suffered on that cross for you and me. It's hard to understand these things when someone that you love is gone in a most brutal way. It's hard to go on when someone that we love with our heart has turned their back on us and betrayed us. It's hard when we lose everything that we have, maybe our home, our car, went bankrupt, lost everything. It's hard. And you wonder, where was God in this? Why, why didn't God do something to stop it? That's usually the question. Why? Why did you permit this to happen? God, why, why, why would you permit my child, my father, my mother, my husband, my wife, my best friend die? Why would you permit that in the way they died? Why would you permit this person that I love with all my heart turn their back on me and walk away? Why would you permit this person to molest this child or this person to kill this other person? Why would you permit it? Why? If you're such a loving God and you love us, why would you permit the pain and the hurt and the suffering that we inflict on each other? Why? Oh, why is the question. Why would he have permitted Adam and Eve in the garden after he told them not to eat of the tree. Why did he permit? Why, you know, he's God. He should have known. He should have seen. He should have known what was going to happen. You know, why would he permit this to happen? And right from the get-go, God loved us all so much. Really, he loved us so much that he was willing to let us go if that was our desire and our choice. He was willing to do whatever he had to do to try to get you back. Sometimes, you know, we will have done something to cause something in our life. And then we turn around and scream at God and say, why did you permit this to happen? Because he gave you free will to either stop it yourself or permit it to happen. Now, I know there's things that happen even against our will. When I was molested at five years old, well, I, you know, five years old can't stop what's going on. I, I've been raped a couple of times. Sometimes it goes out of control, and I mean, 
out of your bounds of being able to control the situation at the moment. And the, it seems like the situation controls you instead of you being able to control the situation. And everything gets out of hand and you're just, you know, and, and, and you go, why did you permit that to happen? Now, I know some people may not agree with me, but you know, God loved mankind so much that even that person that did what he, they did to you, he loved too. And he gave them the safe, same self-will that he gave you to be played out. In this life of structure. But I've found out through my life with all the stuff that's happened to me personally. That God did not approve of what was happening. In fact, he was sad, hurt, and even angry about what was happening. But he had gave man free will to do as they will to do it. And in that will, sometimes what they will to do hurts another person. And God is there to comfort them and to help heal the pain in the heart and heal the scars that was cut in the heart deep and, and that caused a depression and all this stuff in your life. He's there and he walks you through it and he helps you to forgive the other person so that you can be healed with the inside getting the anger, the bitterness and the hate for that person out of your life and growing more spiritual and more righteous in Him by this lesson. When I say in the Scriptures in John 3.16, it says very plainly, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish. That goes to that person that is not living for God, that's totally out of line with God, and even walking very deep on the dark side, away from God and even mankind. He still gives them the chance to turn and come to him. I have found in my life and the things that's happened and I've had to go through with with the pain, the hurt, the anger, wanting to just reach out and scream and say, I want justice for this. But in learning to forgive others for what they did to me physically, emotionally, and even spiritually at times, learning to forgive them, I learn the more I forgive others, the more the love of God comes in and dwells in me, purifying me, perfecting me, as it did Yeshua HaMashiach, because he, he lived in a human body. He walked this earth. He was not treated well on this earth as he walked. He was used, abused, and discarded like trash alongside the road at the end of the day. And as he was dying, and he came to the point 
that the father could no longer be there. He had to depart because the father could not go down to hell, nor could the father experience death. The son had to do it on his own. The father had to turn and walk away. He could not partake of it. And then Yeshua cries out, My, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Well, there's periods of times in our life when things are happening to us. We're much like that point. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then we walk through that dark spot in our life. We walk through that pit that when we seem that we have went through down as far as we can go down and we don't know how to crawl back up. All of a sudden, he throws us a lifeline. A lifeline. Through the body of Yeshua HaMashiach. In the life that he walked, he throwed us a lifeline so we could reach up and grab it and he could pull us up. Now, I could have chose to hate the people that did some of the things to me. I could chose that. That's free will. And I, I lived with the anger and the hate for a while. And it was like a vicious cancer within me. And everything I did, it seemed to block my way. There was no joy in me. There was no laughter in me. There was just this dark despair of, of hating and, and really wanting those people to die. And it would just grow, and it was this like this thick black darkness. And then one day, God throws me the lifeline in Yeshua HaMashiach down and saying, Come back to where your first love. Come back into Him in His shelter. And you grab a hold of that lifeline and you hang on for dear life. And you begin to realize if you're hanging on to Him, then you can't hang on to what's inside here. Hate, bitterness, and anger, and the sin of covenants, and lusting, and things. It, you, you begin to understand it's got to go. It's got to go, because the light cannot dwell where any darkness is at. So you begin to let go of those things deep in your heart. And you begin to say, I forgive. I, I forgive that one. You call that one's name. I forgive that one. And I ask you, Father, to forgive him too. And you go down the line, and, and you're taking the hate and the bitterness, and you're taking that person in your hand and envisioning it, and saying, here, Father, here, here, take, take this, and you place it in the Father's hand, and you come back empty-handed, and you say, now, peace, come into me. And slowly the peace that passes understanding begins to come back in. Begins to fill your life. For it is the scriptures that say, this is the way to walk. Yeshua said it. In love, forgiving your enemy. Love those who hate you and abuse you. Love. Love those that are unlovely. Love and forgive. Forgive all. As He is forgiving us. This is a day of thanksgiving. 
a day of great joy. It should be a great joy of the thanksgiving of what he has blessed us with and gave us, no matter how little amount or how big amount. It was God that was giving it to bless us. And we need to accept those blessings and hang on to them with earnest favor and praying and rejoicing in Him, the Father who gave us all things. Yeshua went to a cruel cross for one reason. That is to die carrying our sins our griefs, our burdens, our brokenheartedness, our despair, our, our, our disappointments. And he, he died on that cross to carry every one of them down to hell to deposit. And then he comes back and left all of that junk down there. And he comes back to give us his righteousness and eternal life in him. To give the joy back to us that was stolen from us. To give us hope that was tore from us at some time in our life. Today we need to be thankful that God the Father so loved the world that he gave his own son. And we should think that son, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, that he was willing to come here as a sacrificial lamb, paying our price, so that we would not have to be judged for our own sins. That we can receive the redemption of righteousness through Him, Yeshua, who lived a perfect righteous life for us. We need to know that. We need to understand that on this, this night of the close of Thanksgiving. We need to know that. We need to understand that those that who celebrate Hanukkah, that a lot of things go into uh, Hanukkah and why it happened. There was a lot of pain and suffering ahead of time and before the joy of the eight days of the oil burning without going out. We need to understand that it is in his hands that he can give us back the joy that Satan stole from us. That he can give it back, just like Job. You know, the, the, Job is an awesome book. Job, I mean, the things that happened to Job was because God trusted him and believed in him and bragged on him to Satan. And Satan got ticked off and dared God to prove that. And God was so confident in Job. He said, well, go ahead. Do what you want to do, but don't touch his life. And in this trust that God had so much for Job and Satan becomes so angry and intent on destroying that trust that God, proving God was wrong for it, but trusting in this mere human being down there. He took everything away from Job. His children, his livelihood. I mean, he was a very rich man going overnight down to nothing. He lost everything in one day. And then... Again, Satan and God gets in this conversation and God stood so confident in Job that Job would stand firm for him that when Satan came up and said, Oh, but stit, skin for skin. If I, you let me have him touch his skin, he'll, blast, he'll curse your, you to your face and die. And God had so much confidence in 
that man named Job that he says, okay. And then Job was struck from, with boils from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, and he sits around in sackcloth and ashes. His wife even tells him to blaspheme God and curse him and, and die and get out of here. And he says, well, what are you, crazy woman? No. Uh -uh. Then he's got these so-called friends, and we know those kind of people, come along whenever you're in distress. When you're down and you seem like you're at the bottom and you can't get up, you've always got these friends come along and say, oh, yeah. It's all your fault. If you hadn't have done this, that wouldn't have happened. If you hadn't have done that, that wouldn't have happened. And little did they know, poor little old, poor Job didn't do a thing. He was perfect and righteous in every way. And he stood firm, firm in that righteousness, even though all the things that Satan throwed at him, he stole, Satan had stole his firstborn children that he had had, seven of them. He had stole all of his livestock. He stole everything from Job, and he left him in boils from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, and Job was miserable. He was in pain. He, he, well, Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. And not one time did he curse God. Now, he cursed the day he was born. Because he said, I'd have been better if I'd have been born dead. But he never cursed God. And then he has these so-called friends sitting around, you know, belittling him and going after him. I mean, you know, they're supposed to come to comfort him. My goodness. <laughs> if blaming you for everything, trying to dig up every little thing that they could find it wrong in your life or they thought was wrong in your life and throwing it in your face was comfort, I, I'm sorry. But we have a lot of them today too, don't we? But Job held firm. And God come down not only talked to the whole bunch, he restored everything back to Job seven times. They, it was better. Kids were more beautiful. He lived a long life, and God blessed him and blessed him over and over. And in a way, God stood up, showed out, and said, Now there, Satan, I proved I knew my man. You couldn't do nothing to him. Whatever you, what all the stuff that you did to him to break him, you never broke him once. Hey, quit it. But I'm telling you people, we all go through trials, tribulations, we all have bad things happen to us. But do we handle them like Job in confidence of God the Father? Or do we fall apart, throw our hands up, and start running around and going, Why? Why did you do this? Why didn't you do that? You know. God is all-powerful, and he could stop anything. I know when the day that I found out what he had done to our daughter, I got to thinking, why didn't you stop him? Why didn't you just strike him dead? Why didn't you have him have a heart? Why, 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 why? And it was so... It was like God just stepped back and he let me whine and complain there for a while. I never said, you know, it's all your fault, God, or stuff. But I, I did say, you know, I knew he could have caused him to have a heart attack or something, you know, stopped it. But I whined and, and belly ached and went on for a while. And, and then... After all the whining and complaining and feeling sorry for myself and for my daughter and blah, 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 you know, all of a sudden I started reaching out. And God reminded me, yeah, I could have done that. Mm -hmm. 
But if I'd have done that, I would have made the easy way out for you and your daughter. They were things that we needed to know how to live. And one of them was in learning to forgive, totally forgive, how to learn to love and pray for the one that hurt you the most and betrayed you, learning how God must feel on a regular basis with how we treat Him. Hmm. How do we treat Him? How do we treat God? A question. Well, this is my thoughts for the end of Thanksgiving Day. I pray that you had a blessed day. I did because I had friends and I had my family and had my grandbabies. So, yes, I had a blessed day. It was really a really, really blessed day today. It was like one of the most perfect days in some time. So I thank you, Father. I thank you. I thank you in the name of Yeshua for this awesome day that you gave me. I, I mean, it's like a gift that you just handed to me today. And I praise you and I worship you and I glorify you for this blessed day of peace. For the peace that passes understanding was so upon me all day. It was just there. It was just like a breath of fresh air, Father. And I just want to thank you for it. And I know I've had hard days in the past, but you brought me through them and loved me all the while. Even when I was re being rebellious, you would just kind of shake me and wake me up and say, you better get back in line. Thank you, Father, for loving me that much. And life goes on. I'll probably have more. Some more hard bumps in the road coming up, but I know you'll be there, Father. I know that you will be there and help me and stand by me all the way. And I want to praise your name ahead of time. Before they even get there, I want to praise your name for being there and standing beside me in your holiness and in your righteousness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for loving and caring about us so much that you were willing to die on that cross for us. I want to thank you for willing to go, willing to go down to hell for us and deposit our sins on there. I just thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Yeshua. I thank you, the beloved Messiah, for caring and loving me enough that you would die on that cross for me. When I didn't deserve it, I don't deserve it, but... You broke the way. You paid the price, and I am yours. And I rejoice in your love. Blessings to everyone. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen.